In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to create a drum track very quickly using GarageBand. Um, you can use that drum track as uh, part of your finished recording. You may use it just to hold the place until you get your drummer in to do the drum part. Um, or you may be exporting it to use in some other kind of project, such as importing it into main stage for a live uh, performance scenario. So let's go ahead into this. First of all, I create a new GarageBand project. I set the tempo to the tempo I'll be playing the song at, the time signature, I've got 4-4, four, four, and the key signature of my song. And then we'll open that as an empty project. We'll start out with a new track, and um, you may need to create a new, a, a different kind of track depending on the defaults you have, but what we want is a software instrument. And um, I'm going to go to the drum kit, and SoCal, that's the drum kit I like to work with, for this first section, which is uh, where we're going to just create a count-in, a four-beat count-in, or a one-measure count-in. So turning on the metronome, and pressing Command K to open up the musical typing keyboard. I'm gonna listen for a sound that I like as a count in. In this case, the letter E is a clap track or a clap sound. Um, if you want that clap sound and you're getting something different, press the letter Z, which will change the area of the keyboard that you're using. You're probably gonna get this by default. So I'm gonna move that down and try the E. So you can move that around to match uh, whatever you want. And you can choose a different sound for this as, as well. But I'm just going to do a four beat count uh, clap along with that metronome. So let's go ahead and do that. Good. That's four beats. I'm going to close the musical typing, Command K. And I am now going to open up my editor here. And if you look down at the um, the MIDI claps I've got here, they're slightly off. I'm going to choose time quantize and set that to the quarter note, and that will shift my claps to be more steady. So let's listen to that. That's what we should expect to hear. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new audio track. Um, or whatever instrument you're using. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually record the song that we want to play to. This can just be a scratch track. It doesn't have to be finished. But what it does need to do is show exactly where the song begins, where the intro ends and the first verse begins, where the choruses are. You want to lay out the song exactly the way it's going to sound when you're done. So you'll create a new audio track or software instrument, depending what you use for that. Um, and then... Uh, I've already done that, so I'm going to just drag in my scratch track right here. And this lays out the arrangement of the song. So a quick listen to what this sounds like. So there's my, uh, my recording of my song, again showing where each part of the song begins and ends. Now I'm going to come up to the track area and say show arrangement track. We get this track right here and I'm going to hit the plus sign and you'll see I get a region which I'm going to rename to clap four or count four. That tells me that this is four claps as my intro to the song. And then I'm going to add another arrangement which will be my intro. And I'm going to add yet another arrangement region. And this one will be my verse. That's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the song. And as we move through different sections of the song, I'll adjust this region area uh, to match the beginnings of each new region of the song. And I will also be adding in with this plus sign new regions as we go so that we can put in all the regions of the song. So let's uh, go back to the beginning and we'll just listen and set up these regions as necessary. There's my clap. Here's my intro.
chorus begins. song it ended right here um, and what these regions are going to do is they're going to define where our drum our drummer plays so we're going to end it here not where the uh, tail of the song actually is but at the end of the final where we'd expect the final drum strike to be note that I've got it right here exactly at the third beat of the 22nd measure I'm going to drag it one beat past that because uh, otherwise we won't get the final drummer beat uh, to hit it'll just end at the at the end of the um, second beat it won't give us a final bam so that's going to be important um so now we have our song laid out and i'm going to just shrink things up a little bit let's go back to the beginning i'm going to shrink things up to get everything on screen a little bit better there we go so uh, my intro, my verse, my chorus, my bridge, and my outro are all laid out here. Next thing I'm going to do is I don't need my metronome anymore, so I'll disable that. And I'm going to come up to track, new track, and now I'll select drummer, create. And you'll see that what happens is it creates a region of the drummer for each of the regions that was created above as the arrangement track. So I've got my intro, my verse, my chorus, and so on in the drummer. That, that allows us now to change the sounds of these drums to match what we want. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna come down here to the drum controller, where first of all, I can select which type of drum track I want this to be. I want it to be a rock track. I can select which drummer I want to use and each of these drummers has distinctly different sounds. We're gonna use Kyle. Um, and then in this area, I've got some presets that will change the way the drums sound. Um, here I have uh, the settings that I can manually control so I can make things louder and softer, more complex or simpler. In this area, I can select which individual drums are being played. I can turn on and off the toms, the bass, snare and so on i can also adjust with with these settings the specific rhythm that they're playing on the drums and finally fills increase or decrease fills or add some swing to the rhythm the changes i make down here apply specifically to the region that i have selected up above so again, we're going to listen through this song and we're going to make changes to the drummer as we see fit. I should point out that the, uh, the drummer himself isn't going to change as we go. We'll, we'll change only the settings of uh, in this area, uh, this area, and these two dials here. So let's go ahead to the beginning and listen to what we got and make our changes as we go. First of all, I want to turn Keep in mind, this is not a final mix here. This is just for the sake of getting our, our drummer sounding right. All right, so I'm going to turn on cycling and bring it to the intro section. And as we listen to this, we'll keep adjusting uh, until we're happy with it. So those toms are definitely far too weighty for this intro. Let's kill this bass drum as well and just turn on the hi-hat. So that sounds better for my intro. I'm going to turn off cycling and let it move on to the next section. Turn cycling back on. So now we're going to be working in the verse. Make sure to select the verse region up here. And 
and let's see what we got. I'm going to try adjusting the hi-hat sound here. We'll go back to that original. Um, turn off cycling, let it move through to the next section. Turn cycling on and wrap that section. Select the chorus. I'm going to back off on this a little bit here on the chorus. But that's good. Turn off cycling, let it roll through to the bridge. Cycle that area. Again, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. That snare, or I'm sorry, that hi hat sounds a little particularly aggressive here, doesn't it? See if we give it a different kick and snare pattern. Okay, I'm good with that. We'll turn off cycling, let it roll through to the outro. Cycling. Now that's a ridiculous symbol here. I'm going to leave the symbols on, but I'm going to change the setting on them. All right, I can live with that. And let's call that uh, good. I'm going to turn off cycling and let it finish out. Good, so I've set up my drum track. I may go back and listen through the whole thing, listening especially at the transition areas between the different regions. But I can com continue cleaning up the drum regions until I'm satisfied, and then I'm done. I've got a drum track. Again, if I'm going to just use this inside of GarageBand for my recording, I can leave this as is and continue on with the rest of my recording work. If I'm going to be using this externally in uh, for, for any other purpose, but in particular, I'm thinking in a live setting with main stage, uh, then um, I'm going to want to bounce this out. So when we do the bounce, first of all, we're going to want to mute that scratch track. The only things we want to bounce out are the actual percussion. So I'm going to bounce out my, my clap in. I use that as my cue when I'm in main stage. So I want to have that. You may want to leave it out if you're using it for other purposes. And then obviously my drum track. So uh, I'm gonna set my cycling region to match what I actually wanna capture in this case. That's gonna be this uh, whole drum region from including the clap track. And um, I may extend it a little bit beyond uh, the very end. I wanna capture any, um, any ringing uh, effects that I have here and uh, then I'm going to bounce so go up to share export song to disk give it a name we'll call it Axel choose what format we want to export as and what quality we want to use and then I'm going to select export cycle area so that means the area that we just selected up here and then export and we're done I now have a, a track that I can work with on my desktop called Axel and if you're uh, if you're interested in seeing how you would use this in main stage I've got a link to my main stage video showing how you can now import this track into main stage and use it there for your live performances I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you.